Hi, welcome back to PR Tech Talk. In this episode, we're going to look into the ADC. I will be working with a Nucleo G071 board, and I will look into ADC multi-channel and also using the IRQ. You can also use the DMA or polling application, and maybe I will do that in the coming videos. But in this one, I will use on uh, focusing on multi-channel and IRQ. So hope that you have your board ready and tag along. We start as usual with a project in the QBMX and uh, make sure that your tools are updated. So we go with file. This we've done several times before and the new STM32 project. I'm starting with the board selector since I know what board I'm using. Uh, but you can also use the MCU selector if you have another board or another microcontroller. So I have the Nucleo G071RB. So this is the board. We start with next. Uh, we give the project a name PRTT Multi ADC. We call it that, PRTT, multi-ADC, and finish. And we initialize uh, every peripherals as uh, the tool wants us to. Great, so here we see the, the microcontroller and it's an LQFP64 pin. And we start as usual by looking into the sys folder that and make sure that the serial wire is actually enabled otherwise it will be very hard to debug and uh, then we go with rcc and uh, as usual i would like to use the internal clocks so i disable the external clocks uh, and then i go for the clock tree so uh, here we can see that it's uh, selected from the very beginning 16 megahertz but uh, if it's possible to run with 64 megahertz i would like to have it that way so i just hit 64 and it finds a solution for me and the solution is like this it working with the the um, high speed internal rc on 16 megahertz and that is going into this source multiplexer and there is a multiplication and a division and it comes up say with pll clock and that is 64 megahertz and that is sourced as my uh, HC clock and uh, that clock is also uh, 64 megahertz coming to the ADC so that is what we needed to do on the RCC and sys tab so we can uh, minimize this one so the next one is uh, we're going to look into the analog converters so uh, we go with the ADC one and if we take a look on the board itself and if, we, and if we take a look on the Nucleo G071 board, and it says uh, G070RB here, but it's the same pinout, uh, we can see here we have analog 0 to 5, and that is on the PA0, PA1, and PA4. So 0, 1, and 4 for uh, the port A. And that one is that we are going to be using. So we, we'll take a look here on, on the, de the device and we can see that we have the PA0, we have the PA1 and we have the PA4. And if we go on the analog to digit digital converter and we enable the, the zero, we see that this pin is green. And the uh, in one is the PA1. And finally, we choose the PA4. Uh, which is this one. So now we have selected the channels that we would like to uh, select. You can select other as well. But now we need to also make the configurations on these channels. So we go for the configuration folder. I just dragged this folder or this line so we will get some more details here. And I will expand this as well. So here you have some tabs, and if we go for the parameter settings, there is where all the stuff is happening. 
we can see that there are uh, different uh, categories and we just minimize them to have an overview on it. So we have the ADC settings, we have the ADC regular conversation modes, and we have a couple of watchdogs. And I will walk, look into the watchdog in a coming video. So if that is interesting, stay tuned. So we start with the ADC settings and here we can change the clock uh, that we need. Uh, I would like to have a very fast ADC, so I won't change that one. So it will change uh, the 64 megahertz down to 32 megahertz. And the ADC resolution, uh, this uh, ADC ha we have, have a maximum resolution on 12 bits, so I will keep it like that. If you would like to have very fast uh, ADC conversions, <coughs> or if you don't um, need such a high resolution, you can select a, a small resolution, but in this case I will remain with a 12-bit. And then we're actually going down to, uh, before we look into the other stuff here, we're going down to the regular conversation mode. And there we will uh, look for this number of conversions. It says one here. Uh, we, that is correct if you only make one conversation, but we are going to make uh, multi-channels. So we uh, end up with three channels here. So, and uh, now we can also look for the scan conversion mode. The scan conversion mode that is now enabled, that is enabled due to that we changed uh, the number of conversions to more than one. Then this is uh, possible to change to enabled. Uh, these three we keep disabled and uh, the end of conversation selection. I would like to have an interrupt when all three conversations are done. So I'll change this to end of sequence of conversion. So the well, I, I just start one conversion and it will convert all three uh, to me. And uh, when all three are done, I will get an interrupt. And uh, the, the rest is down here. Uh, sampling time. I have a 12-bit micro ADC, so I will give it uh, 19.5 cycles to convert. And we have, as we said, three conversions. Now, here is something really important. Now we have rank 1, 2, and 3, since we had three conversions up here. If we open up these, you will see that rank 1 is channel 0. So the first, it will start with channel 0 and make a conversion. And it will use this uh, sampling common time 1, which we set up here, so it's 19.5 cycles. The, after this is done, it will go to this one, and then it will make channel once, 0 once again. And that is not correct, because then we will only uh, uh, have free conversions on channel 0. And uh, we actually would like to have uh, all three channels. So I changed that to one and the last one I then changed to four. So if you don't manage to get conversions on more than one or the, the A0, then you have forgotten to uh, change this one. So that is a crucial thing to do. And also we need to do something else. If you now, uh, we said that we would like to have an interrupt in the end of the sequence of the conversions. We actually need also to uh, enable uh, the interrupts. So we go for the NVIC settings and it says ADC0, a comparator 1 and 2, and uh, we will then have the interrupts enabled. So we will enable that one as well. If we didn't do that, uh, we wouldn't get any interrupts at all either. I think that this is all I needed to do. Uh, and we can now... Uh, build a project for us, build a skeleton for us. So CubeMX take all the information that we, all the settings we did in the CubeMX and it creates this skeleton for us. So now we have the skeleton up here and it also changed the perspective to the C++ instead of the uh, CubeMX configuration tab. We have the IOC tab up here and we also have the IOC file here, if we want to 
get back to the cube MX if we made any errors or if we want to add something. So if I'm just clicking this one, I will get back to the uh, configuration in uh, the cube MX again. And uh, if I change now to the main C file, and I didn't make any changes, it doesn't make any uh, update to it. So we just build it and it uh, builds without any errors and any, or any warnings. Great, so now we have the skeleton set up. Now we need to uh, make some changes to the main C file. So we start by declaring some variables that we need to store our uh, ADC conversions into. And we go under the user code begin PW for private variables. So we start there. Uh, so that is what we need at this stage. So we have ADC buffer and we have uh, three positions and they are all 16 bit. Uh, we have a 12 bit ADC, so it will fit nicely in the 16 bit register. And uh, also I, we have this flag ADC ready and that is have now the status zero. So we go under uh, begin two. Uh, here we see all the uh, private prototypes and uh, here we have the initializations done for us and here we have the ADC1 initialization as well and here we have the user code begin too. Uh, here we start with how ADC start and here we can see that we have several starts we can start with a polling method, we can start with a DMA method, or we can use this method that I'm using today, and that is the interrupt method. And it takes one parameter, and that is uh, the handler for the, the ADC, and that is the ADC1. That is actually all we need to start the ADC. So then, then the ADC starts to make conversions as we have declared to it, so it will make conversions on all three but um, and and when all the three conversations are done it will get an interrupt and we will look into the interrupt now so i normally put my callbacks in user code begin four so i have navigated down to this position and uh, it's now between the begin and the end uh, that is a very good thing to do be uh, enter your code between the beginning and the end. Otherwise, if you read, make some code outside of these uh, sections and you make a, a change for some peripherals in the cube MX and you, con and you regenerate the project, it can be that the cube MX then deletes everything that is outside of these. But when you write code that is inside the begin and the end, they are protected and won't be uh, won't be addressed at all. So we stand here in the begin four, and to have the callback, uh, we can go under the drivers, and we can go under the HAL driver. We have the source folder, and there we have many HAL drivers for various per various peripherals, and we are interested in the HAL ADC. So we open this one, and we have it open here, and we can look uh, out here in the right corner. Here we can see all the uh, procedures that are uh, already available for us. And we will look in to uh, see what we have here. Here we have something HAL ADC, HAL ADC conversion complete callback. So it is already declared for us in a callback, but as a function weak. So it says here this function should not be modified. When callback is needed, function call ADC conversion complete callback must be implemented in the user file. Great, so we just take this everything except the weak statement. And we copy that one and we paste it into, oh, sorry, only once. And uh, we pa paste it in our begin for. So what we can do here, actually, we 
don't want to do too much in a callback function. We want, would like to do as little as possible. Uh, so in this case, we're only going to set the flag. So we take the ADC ready and we give that the value one. That is what we're going to do in the callback function. So it's um, very minimal uh, and we can try to build it. Great, so what we have now started, we have started the ADC with the start command and then it starts to make conversations to us and we get an interrupt when the interrupts are ready here. But uh, we need to find or take out the values that it has converted for us and we will do that in the main file. So we go up here in the main file and under the while one loop and uh, if we start uh, again, we go within these limits, the begin or end. So we have one section here, and then we have one section begin three that begins and ends here. So we, it doesn't matter, we can stay here. We have now come to the while one loop and I have prepared some code here and I would like to just go through what I'm doing here. So from the very beginning, when we start uh, this, uh, we had set this ADC ready to zero. So it will be waiting here until our callback function put the ADC ready to one. So as soon as it makes that one, it will pass this one and uh, immediately we will put it to ADC ready zero again. And then we will uh, have this small for loop and we will uh, populate the ADC buffer, uh, three values uh, with this small for loop, and uh, that is with how ADC get value from the handler ADC1. So when these are done, we have taken all the three values and populated the uh, buffer there. We come down here out of the if loop and we put a small de delay on 1000 milliseconds and we start the cycle over again. So we try to compile this and see what is happening. It compiled without any errors and we debug it. Here I have a picture on the installation on the development board and also what is sourcing the information or the signals to the board. And this is the Adalm 2000, which I have been using before. And it's a multi-tool from analog devices. And uh, it, they have a software called Scopy and uh, in this application, I have been using two signals, uh, using the signal generator. So I have two waveforms uh, with with a three volt swing. So that is the zero, and that is the three volt. So I have two signals. One is sourcing to a a in one zero, and the other one is to a in one. And then I also have a steady voltage here on one volt that is uh, feeded into the AN4. So that is already done there. Uh, to see these values, uh, we have uh, this buffer. We increase this one. So we see the buffer zero to two and uh, we run. And now we see the values are uh, changing all the time. And uh, if we bring in this uh, guy again, we can see that the AN0 is quite steady, uh, but the other two, they, they are changing heavily. And that is the uh, signal generator's sweep. So depending on when it's sampling, it depends. So this is made mainly so that we can see that there is a and uh, it's activity on the devices. And if we go for the voltage and we now we have 1335 and uh, we put it on uh, three volts instead, we see immediately it goes up to 3807 counts. So this is not millivolts, this is counts uh, from the ADC controller. And if we then take it down to uh, 1.5, so 1.5, uh, it goes down to something like that. Great, so we see that there's actually um, the feedback loop is, is done there. 
But I will also take it one step further to uh, make this value to millivolts instead of just counts. And there is uh, help for us in the, uh, in the STM32Cube IDE. There is a helper or a macro within the tool uh, that assists us with converting the ADC values to uh, millivolts and also another one for uh, converting the internal temp sensor to degrees Celsius and I think also Fahrenheit. Uh, but here in Sweden, where I'm living, we are mainly thinking about Celsius. And um, But if we take a look on the, the voltage, there is this uh, script or this macro called underscore underscore hal adc calc data to voltage and if we open that one open declaration for that one we can see where it's uh, residing and it's uh, in the file stm32g0xx hal adc dot h uh, so here we have uh, that and it says a uh, helper macro to calculate calculate analog reference voltage for uh, two millivolts from adc conversion data of internal voltage reference and uh, it takes uh, three, uh, three parameters, so it has the VREF analog voltage, and uh, that is uh, the reference voltage. In this case, it, then it's the v VDD, so it's 3.3 volt or 3,300 millivolts. And then we have the, the sample data, the ADC data that we just acquired. And we also need to give it the information information on the ADC resolution, and that is 12-bit. And then again, there is a special uh, macro for the 12-bit uh, defined that we need to use the ADC resolution 12-bit. So if we go back to the main C file, uh, we need to first of all uh, declare the reference analog voltage. So I put it under uh, private defines, uh, just defined, underscore, underscore, VREF analog. Uh, underscore voltage and double underscore again and 3300 millivolts so that is what we need to do in the pri private defines then we also need to have a variable that is uh, uh, taking the return value that is uh, returned after we have made this conversation so i put in 32 bit adc underscore voltage millivolt and i declare it with val value zero so we have those already prepared for us. So under after we have now uh, populated the buffer with all the values, I then run this tool and I give this uh, uh, variable the, the, the information from this conversion then. So I take the, the reference analog voltage, which I defined at 3300 above, and I take the ADC buffer zero, which uh, was uh, A in zero, and that is the fixed voltage that I have put on my scope. And also I put the ADC resolution 12 bit. So we compile this one, and to get this this big, uh, you just have to double click on, on the folder. So uh, then you get back. Uh, I, I choose to do that because that line was so long so it didn't fit in the window so if you want to do that just double click on it and you double click again to get back uh, but we build a project and we debug it and then under live expressions we also want to then add this uh, variable uh, that we now created here. Like so, great. And we run the code. So now we can see we still have these three values, uh, the buffers, uh, which are uh, always changing. The buffer zero is uh, more or less fixed. There are some small variations on it. 
but then it converts it to the voltage millivolts here. And if we now take in our scope, scope again, we can see that we have set this to 1.5 volts and it's uh, measured to one point, a bit over 1.52, something like that. And uh, STM32 uh, measures 1.57, so it's a bit higher than we are outputting. And we can also change this now to just see so that there is actually something happening. So we change it to 3 volts and now we see that it's uh, 3.02 and uh, it's 3.07. Uh, we can try to make this bit a bit more accurate as well. So we can start making some um, calibration. So we break this one again and we find where we started the uh, under user code begin to just before we start the ADC we can calibrate it and uh, ADC E X uh, so there is a calibration start and like so. So there is actually a built-in function for calibrated as well. So we see if that will uh, improve anything. And we take out the live expressions again. And it's mainly this ADC voltage that we are interested in. Now we can see it's a bit closer. So the, it actually do something with the value. So it makes uh, it takes in, into consideration the factory trimming parameters as well. So if you're looking for some uh, more accurate, then you can uh, use that as well. Uh, and if we just not 31 volt, then my Mac controller will dislike it. And uh, we see that 1.01, and yeah, it's fairly similar. So this was the multi-channel uh, ADC with interrupt. I will also do some uh, DMA and maybe also some polling if you're interested into that. And I can also look into the internal temperature sensor. Uh, how we do that with a built-in macro to calculate the degree Celsius and uh, I, I hope that you learned something and you found it interesting. Please subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. I'm closing into my 1000 subscribers and uh, it's really fun to see that uh, there are so many interested in, in the STM32. So if you're not a subscriber, please hit the, the round button below and uh, also find some uh, other of my videos be beside me. So until I see you next time, stay safe.